Hey guys, my name is Carlos Mendez. I'm a 3D artist using SolidWorks Visualize. Today in quick tips, rendering a turntable. So rendering a turntable is really a great feature in Visualize that allows you to see but pretty much 360 degree view of the object. So whenever you place an object in the center, you can take it to that option and be able to show it to your client, uh, be able to composite it later in a video, or really be able to show it to anybody that's a decision maker. So I'll show you how to do that. And thankfully it's also very easy to do. So the first step to do this is that you want to make sure that the model is centered. So we're going to switch to the model selection mode. We click on that little yellow cube there. Uh, next step to do is you hold control, shift, and left mouse button click. And what that does, it centers the model uh, in the center of the screen. So I'll show you again, if it's off centered, you hold control, shift, left mouse button. And uh, the next thing you would do, you want to go into the camera settings. In this case, the tab is already open. Click on the camera. Then you want to click on transform. And you'll notice these sliders right here. Um, what we want to do is we want to look at the MRI machine in this case head on uh, to kind of set the start position of that 360 rotation um, of the turntable. So what we want to do is we want to mess with these two right here, uh, the longitude and the latitude. So I'm going to position the latitude at zero degrees and the longitude at zero degrees as well. Next thing I'll do is I will um, hold hold alt and right mouse right mouse button and drag up to get close. However, I'm going to check to make sure that I'm still within frame by scrubbing through the longitude slider and it looks like I am perfect. So I'm going to go back to zero. Excellent. Next step would be to go into the output tools, click output and the fourth one down, second to last, there's a tab that's the turntable tab. You'll find two sub options, sub tabs, the turntable options and the render options. We'll, we'll click on the render first. It's very similar to just rendering a still. Um, and if you, if I kind of click through them, you can see it looks very similar. Um, and the options also will be very similar. So here we're going to put the name of the file. We're going to make sure that the file path is correct your, your uh, output size, and um, very importantly here, you wanna make sure you, you have the correct rendering mode. Uh, you can render in all three rendering modes uh, from preview to accurate. So uh, usually, depending on what I want, uh, I will select that. Uh, next thing you wanna also know is that it's possible to be able to render this with an alpha, like I said, if you're gonna composite it later using programs like After Effects, um, that will allow you to do that. So this looks good. At this moment, I'm going to click turntable options. And now here, uh, you're going to have basically two choices. You can either uh, render only the stills by unticking the create movie, right? You can select it to be a JPEG, TIFF, or an HDR. Or you can render that and the movie by creating, um, by clicking on create movie. So we're going to leave it at that. Um, next, these series of options are also very important. You're going to tell what directions you're going to be uh, rotating, either clockwise or counterclockwise, uh, how much you want that the angle coverage. We have a 360 degrees um, by default, and I'm going to keep it that way. And uh, the frames per second. Um, the default is 30. I had it at 15 for, for a test there that I did earlier, uh, but let's put it at 30. We can now put how long the duration of that uh, rotation uh, is going to last. So in this case, they have it at 10, but you could put it at 2 or at 5 or you can scrub it uh, using this slider here. Now, keep in mind, it's in milliseconds. So um, just, you know, divide that by a thousand and you'll get to the actual second second time. Or you can look up here to get a, a more precise uh, value. So at this point, you would hit render. However, I already rendered these, so I will show you what I have and what I got for that. So um, I rendered a couple. I rendered one in preview mode at 15 frames per second. And that's why it looks a little choppy, right? And I rendered one that was at run that was at uh, full size here. Let me show you. Um, it was this one, yeah, this one right here. And you can see it's smooth. It's uh, this side. I think I did that at 720 uh, resolution. A couple of tips that I um, I wanted to suggest is that. 
if you're not, this can be very time consuming because if, you know, if you're familiar with rendering any video, you have to, it's a series of images. So you have to um, calculate, um, you have to calculate the, the length of time it takes to render and multiply it by how many seconds and how many frames per second. So in the case of, um, if, if we're rendering at 30 frames per second for five seconds, we're talking about 150 frames. So you can really take up a day, to, hours to days to, you know, multiple days. So uh, I recommend before you commit to the final render, do something at a lower resolution, uh, maybe even less than 720. Um, potentially even at a, if you're doing it in accurate mode, make sure your passes are low and, and even uh, reduce the frames per second count to make sure you have the kind of turntable that you'd like. Uh, after you're happy with that, then you can put all those parameters up to sort of the high setting that you'd like. And uh, and that should be, you know, you should end up with a really nice result at the end. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you found, hopefully you found this helpful, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon.